Greetings folks, in this video I'll be having a further look at the SpeedyB F405 wing board and connections. I have done a previous video that shows the basics of connections to the board, uh, but a few questions have popped up recently after that video uh, asking about FlySky receivers and adding extra channels for things like flaps and gear and also how to get FRSky smart port telemetry from the wing board. Uh, so, alright, let's go through it. Uh, first of all, we'll look at the um, FlySky and iBus connection. Now, I have the ST8 radio there and an SR8 receiver. Now, the FlySky receivers, most of them, will do iBus and SBus, and we plug the signal cable into the servo. They call the iBus out servo connection there. And in the radio, we set up which protocol we want to use. It's in the receiver set, in the bind settings, and in the output here you can see we can change from iBus to SBus or PWM and SBus and PWM and iBus. There's also PPM and SBus and PPM and iBus but uh, iNav doesn't use PPM anymore so we can forget about that. So let's start with iBus. We'll just set that as PWM and iBus. That sets the output of the receiver as iBus. So now we need to go to uh, the configurator and set up iBus in the iNav configurator. Uh, iBus is not an inverted signal so that can plug into any UART and we'll use UART1 and the signal wire plugs into RX1 so we just plug that straight in there like that. Now we go to the configurator and in the ports tab we select serial RX on UART1 and now we go to the receiver tab and we choose iBus as the serial receiver provider and that's all we need to do and now we can show you the channels moving to show that iBus is actually working now to change to SBus we go into the bind settings again output change that to SBus SBus is an inverted signal that's why these F4 boards have a special S bus pin because that is uh, an inverted pin there so that it can understand the S bus signal. So we take the receiver connection and put it into the S bus pin there. Uh, and now we go to the configurator and change to serial receiver on UART2 and S bus as the serial receiver provider. And once again, I'll show you the channels moving to show that it is actually working. Now, one of the things you must do is Prove to yourself that you have actually bound the receiver to your transmitter. A lot of problems happen because people think the receiver is bound, but it isn't actually. So let's have a look at that. Apply some voltage, and you can see on the radio, we get the receiver voltage showing up. So that is a very good indication that uh, the receiver is bound, but I like to prove it once and for all by plugging in a servo, say to channel one. There we go there. Wheel the sticks. Now you know it is actually bound. If you haven't done that, you can't actually be sure that uh, the receiver is properly bound. Now, moving along, setting up things like flaps and gear. Uh, so, the, the uh, pins we would connect to, uh, we have S bus on the first set of pins, we have the two motors on the second two sets of pins. Uh, so, then we might, if we've got a conventional aeroplane, we might have elevator, aileron, aileron and rudder. So that brings us to S7. So we can connect flaps and gear servos to S7 and S8. They're the first free ones in my particular setup. So I'll put a, a servo into S7 there. Now these will effectively be passed straight through the flight control board without any influence from the flight control board. So uh, we would just set this up on the radio uh, as a channel. So I'll go into the mixer for my standard INAV model. So with my standard INAV model I have the first four channels as they should be, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, and then I have all my mode switches for the next four channels, and then channel 9 and 10 are, are effectively free, and I've assigned them to the S2 slider and the S1 slider, uh, and we can pretend that that's gear and flaps. So if we back out of there and have a look at the monitor screen that's channels 1 to 8, channels uh, 9 to 16 you can see 
see the output action there from my two sliders. So we're going to use those channels to pass through to the flight control board where the gear and flaps servos will be plugged in. Now connected to the configurator, you can see my channel 9 and channel 10 both moving the same as they were on the transmitter. So that's all working well. So now we need to go to the mixer page and add the lines, add a new mixer line and we choose channel 9 as the input and we would connect the channel 9 whatever that is flaps or gear to uh, S7 it shows us up there let's add another for channel 10 so there we have 9 and 10 connected to uh, S7 and S8 so now if we have a look at the outputs page we can see all the outputs there's the normal sticks working and here are the flaps and gear channels working so they are they are being passed through to the gear and the flaps so if you can see those outputs working on the uh, output screen in the iNav configurator then uh, that's all you can do really and plug the servo in and uh, plug in a battery and you should be able to see the gear or the flaps working now if that's not working then you're going to have to look at other things it's going to be your wiring uh, or plugged into the wrong spot or you're going to have to look at your soldering and make sure that you haven't bridged some of the so uh, the uh, pins underneath with a multimeter you can check the voltage across the servo negative and positive and make sure that none of the uh, signal pins are sort of connected to each other uh, but if it doesn't work, um, that's about all you can do. Now let's talk about smart port telemetry. So smart port telemetry is telemetry that comes from FR Sky receivers. It has a little smart port here that you can plug external sensors into uh, and it sends the telemetry back to the radio so you can have it on the screen. You can also plug the flight control board into smart port and send all the flight control board telemetry back to the radio. However, SBUS and SmartPort are inverted signals. Uh, F4 boards have the dedicated SBUS pin, which is an inverted UART, UART2 usually, uh, but they don't have a, an inverted T pin, which is what we need to plug the SmartPort into. So that's where Soft Serial comes in. Soft Serial is a CPU based or software based UART, not a built in UART. Uh, so with the right firmware, you can enable soft serial, which gives you an inverted T2 pin, basically. Uh, now, as the board came, it was supposed to support soft serial, uh, but it wasn't properly implemented. So uh, we actually need to flash new firmware provided by SpeedyB, which enables soft serial or smart port telemetry. Uh, and I actually have a, um, a link in the description to a blog post where I explain all of this stuff and give a link to the... Uh, the new firmware that SpeedyB sent to me. Hopefully they're going to make it widely available and uh, change the uh, default iNav firmware so that it includes soft serial. Once we have the new firmware flashed, uh, we can connect up the smart port to the T2 pin, power up the board, and we go to telemetry and hit discover new, and we should get all the 22 different telemetry items coming from the flight control board as well as coming from the receiver itself all right so that's how to do it i'll uh, show you now how to flash new firmware and where to get the firmware as well okay so to flash new firmware we need to uh, put the board into dfu mode so that's what this little button is for push the button then plug it in go and you can see that's shown up as DFU and we can go to firmware flasher now what we need to do is, is find the new firmware from speedy beat and it's not going to show up in the uh, choose firmware version or choose board there we actually need to uh, go to my blog and uh, th this shows the different uh, hex files so download the hex file here it is here on the desktop and uh, now we go load firmware, firmware local. F 
find that hex file, open, and now we're ready to flash firmware. Okay, once we flash the firmware, we can connect the board, and if we go to configuration, choose enable CPU based serial ports, choose telemetry output, and then go to the ports page, uh, save and reboot, sorry, first, and then we go to the ports page, and you'll see this extra line, extra UART, show up down here. So that's the soft serial one. Uh, and we choose smart port as the telemetry there, save and reboot, and uh, that's all you need to do. Plug.